You've probably thought it at some point, maybe while staring out over the endless blue or when your shampoo label said, rinse thoroughly. But where does all that rinsed water even go? The question is simple. Why doesn't the ocean ever run out of water? It's been there for billions of years. It evaporates, floods cities, freezes, melts, gets peed in by fish and surfers, and yet it's still there. Full, unbothered, deep as ever. Is someone refilling it behind the scenes? Does Poseidon have a Brita filter the size of Texas? Or is there actual science behind this watery magic trip? Let's dive in. First things first, how much water are we talking about? The ocean holds around 1.332 billion cubic kilometers of water. That's 352 quintillion gallons, give or take a splash. If you tried to drink the ocean at one gallon per day, it would take you longer than the age of the universe, assuming you didn't die instantly from salt poisoning. Point is, it's a lot of water. But more importantly, it's part of a closed system. That means almost all the water on Earth today is the same water that was here 4.5 billion years ago. The water your dog drooled today might have once been in dinosaur pee, or the liquid in Cleopatra's bath. It's all recycled, and the sheer size of the ocean plays a psychological trick on us too. The horizon looks endless, the waves keep coming, and we assume the ocean is limitless. But it's not infinite, just incredibly well-managed by the physics of Earth. You remember the water cycle, right? From school? That little diagram with clouds, rain, rivers, and arrows everywhere? That's not just a drawing, it's the reason the ocean never runs dry. Evaporation. The sun heats ocean water. It rises as vapor. Condensation vapor forms clouds. Precipitation, clouds get heavy, rain, snow, sleet, etc. Runoff. Water flows back to the ocean via rivers, lakes, and underground channels. Repeat forever. It's the ultimate loop, like the Netflix autoplay of Earth. And here's the twist. Most of this happens over the ocean itself. Around 85% of global evaporation and 77% of precipitation happen right above the sea. The ocean loses water to the air, but then it snatches it right back, like a hydrological boomerang. The system is so efficient that even large-scale natural disasters barely shift the balance. Hurricanes, tsunamis, monsoons, they move water around, but they don't remove it. It's like shaking a snow globe. All the chaos happens inside. So, why doesn't evaporation dry it out? It's a fair question. The sun pulls up trillions of gallons of water every day. Shouldn't that leave a dent? Not really, because that vapor turns into rain, and much of it falls right back into the ocean. Even rain over land eventually drains into rivers, which head straight back to the sea. Think of it as an extremely complicated water slide network, with gravity as the lifeguard. Plus, the planet isn't losing water to space well, barely. More on that later, so the system stays full. It's not a bathtub with a slow leak. It's a jacuzzi with perfect plumbing. And interestingly, evaporation actually helps regulate the ocean itself. As warm water rises and cools, it helps drive ocean currents, which in turn move heat around the globe. So, evaporation doesn't just take water. It helps keep the whole system moving and balanced. What about all that ice? Shouldn't that trap ocean water? Good catch. Yes, a lot of the planet's water is trapped in ice caps and glaciers, especially in Antarctica and Greenland. But here's the deal. The total volume of water on Earth doesn't change. It just changes form. Solid, liquid, vapor. It's still water. When ice melts due to climate change, it adds liquid water to the ocean, raising sea levels. When it freezes, it locks water away. But it's still part of the planet's water inventory. So no, the ocean isn't losing water to ice. If anything, it's gaining it as the poles melt, which is not great news if you live near a beach. But what about plants and animals? Don't they use water? Yes, every living thing on Earth needs water. But again, it's all part of the cycle. Plants absorb water through their roots. Animals drink it. But then what? Plants release water back into the air through transpiration. Animals pee, poop, and sweat it back out. Dead things decompose, and that water goes right back into the soil. You don't use up water. You borrow it. Even bottled water ends up somewhere eventually. That fresh spring you bought for $1.99? It might end up as rain in another continent. Does water ever leave the planet? Technically, yes. But not enough to matter. A tiny fraction of water vapor at high altitudes can get broken apart by solar radiation. Hydrogen escapes into space. Oxygen sticks around. But this process, called hydrodynamic escape, is incredibly slow. Like, write a novel while watching paint dry. Slow. So yes, Earth leaks a few water molecules here and there, but it's a microscopic drip in a cosmic bucket. The bigger threat isn't losing water, it's mismanaging it. On a geological time scale, Earth keeps its water. But on a human time scale, we're not doing great at sharing it fairly. Where did the ocean come from in the first place? Great question. You 
you'd think it's been here forever, but that wasn't always the case. There are two main theories. Outgassing from volcanoes. Early Earth had a lot of volcanic activity. These volcanoes spewed out steam, which cooled into liquid water and filled the basins. Comet and asteroid delivery. Some scientists think icy space rocks brought water during Earth's formation, like interplanetary Amazon delivery. Either way, once the ocean was here, it stayed. Mars, for example? Not so lucky. It had water once, then it lost its atmosphere and became a dusty ghost planet. We, on the other hand, won the hydrological lottery. But what about humans? Messing things up? Fair point. We've dammed rivers, drained wetlands, and polluted water sources. But we're not removing water, we're redistributing and contaminating it. Example, if you turn a rainforest into a parking lot, water doesn't vanish. But you've changed how it evaporates, where it flows, and how fast it runs off. Same with climate change. Melting ice adds water to oceans, rising temperatures increase evaporation, and shifting wind patterns move rain away from places that need it. So yes, humans are messing with where the water goes, but not how much there is. The ocean isn't going to dry up, but it might move inland and drown your basement. Is it possible for the ocean to ever run out? Short answer? Not really. Long answer? We'd have to boil the entire ocean into space. Not happening unless the sun goes rogue. Or freeze it entirely. Not possible unless Earth turns into Hoth. Or somehow teleport all the water away. Still waiting on Elon. As long as Earth remains habitable, the ocean will stick around. Swishing, sloshing, soaking your socks at the beach. Fun fact, we can't even desalinate it fast enough. If we ever did run out of fresh water, we could technically desalinate ocean water. But it's expensive. It uses a lot of energy. It leaves behind brine that can hurt marine life. So the ocean is there, full of water. But it's not a giant drinking fountain. The ocean doesn't stay full, it stays moving. The real secret to the ocean never running out isn't some divine top-off. It's the eternal dance of molecules. Water evaporates, condenses, falls, flows, and repeats over and over. The ocean isn't still, it's cycling, breathing, processing. And it's been doing it long before we showed up with our pool noodles and plastic straws. So next time you stare out at the sea and wonder why it never runs dry, remember, it's not magic. It's the greatest recycling system on Earth. Ever wondered where your bathwater ends up? Or what dinosaurs might have peed in the ocean first? Tell us your weirdest water theory in the comments. And don't forget to like this video if you've ever tried to count waves. Subscribe to YX for more science that makes the everyday feel epic. Hit the bell so you don't miss the next drop of knowledge. See you in the next Tide of Curiosity.